the story. I kind of just wish we discovered or put this on for discovering this five seconds ago. This is ridiculous. It's too good. I think I think you should lead in. I I, th- I think so. Hello, uh, good whatever. Uh, welcome to the industry is doom. I am Michaela Gorman. Uh, who am I? I am Michelle Wolf, and I am also <laughs> two men named Eddie Joyce and Kathy Bennett. And Kathy Bennett. Oh, I'm also Blake Hunsley. Hi. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, two men named Eddie Joyce. Uh, so we, 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 uh, we, we were talking about a story earlier today that we were going to talk about on this, and literally five seconds before we started recording, uh, we were pulling the story up to just refresh ourselves, <clears throat> and we found a different angle that is even more fucking insane. It's so much more fun. Um, so why don't I introduce the less friendly-looking Eddie Joyce, and then you can enlighten us on the significantly more friendly Brooklyn man oh seriously God. the significantly more friendly looking guy and the foul looking guy and one's from Newfoundland yeah. and one is from New York City and like, man it is not the way you think oh uh <laughs> Eddie Joyce is a, an m a member of the oh uh the, the new oh M-H-A. M- MHA MHA is Quebec I was like wait a minute they no they're not the nation anymore the Quebec more recently, but, yes yeah. now MHA is a member of the House of Assembly for uh for Newfoundland and he's been, he was, he was a cabinet minister yeah. in Newfoundland and he's been suspended. He's now sitting as an independent because of, uh, it seemingly numerous bullying complaints. Likely multiple to, mm. oh God, no. Nebulous no, bullying complaints, I would definitely say. Yeah. But, but before we get to, to that nebula, uh, Eddie Joyce, friendly Eddie Joyce. Uh, friendly Eddie Joyce. Uh, friendly Eddie Joyce is a, an author, uh, New York, uh, New York Times, uh, uh, best-selling list uh, author uh, uh, who actually, if I recall, has has been very uh, instrumental in getting quite a few charities uh, uh, attention in the past for not only like, you know, uh, like 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 good things like you know kids with cancer and shit. Well, th- that's not a good thing, but giving them money is, but namely sexual harassment charities. Whoa. So I bet this blew his fucking mind when he started getting yelled at for that shit. Yeah. Um. By the way, this is adorable. So, <laughs> so so yeah. Author Eddie Joyce has been mistaken for uh, politician shithead Eddie Joyce. Man, like <laughs> seriously, the crankiest looking politician. I understand he's going through some stuff right now, but wow. You are just violating every Newfoundland cliche. If you walked into a bar, most people would walk out of a bar. Dang. Anyway, he got thanked for something about fried chicken, like Mrs. Brown's fried yeah. chicken. So, so yeah, on the, the, Twitter, this, Mrs. This, Brown's. Mrs. This Mrs. Brown. Delicious. So this, uh, th- this uh, New York Eddie Brown, or Ed, Eddie Brown, Eddie Joyce had uh, uh, apparently been aware of this politician before because. Uh, while the politician Eddie Joyce doesn't have a Twitter account, uh, the author obviously does. And so some people, this this happens quite frequently, uh, want to express some thanks for uh, uh, the politician Eddie, or Eddie Joyce bringing some Mary Brown's chicken. That is a Newfoundland uh, company. Mary Brown's back. Mary Brown's back. Uh, try the taters. There's something that's like, <laughs> I can't remember what it is. A Newfoundland friend of mine told me that like going down to Mary Brown's and get a something and something was like essentially Newfoundland slang in their, well, in their town because yeah. it varies so much, but Newfoundland slang in their part of the world for like going out to any restaurant and picking up virtually any meal. It was like, I'm yeah. going to Mary Brown's. and yeah. Going to Mary Brown's. Are you in actually going to No. Mary Brown's is great. Oh, no. Mary Brown's is fantastic. They pressure cook their chicken. This, this uh, they used to episode's cook brought to you by. I don't think they do anymore. No, they still do. Can't. Do they? Uh, yeah. They must, but there's no way. You're like... not supposed to know. Oh, Mary I've Browns. I've seen the drums themselves. You didn't hear that part, but this episode should be sponsored by Mary Browns. Mary Browns Chicken. It's the fucking shiznit. Apparently, it's even known in Brooklyn these days, but it's by there, it's known as Mrs. Browns. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's got to suck. It's got to be fun when you're thanked for getting some Mary Browns. Yeah, but, like... but then people start screaming at you because you've probably, uh, if, if not bullied them, uh, or if, if not sexually harassed them, then bullied them. <laughs> bullied. This... Wait, sorry, it, it, we were laughing because there was, we just watched him give an interview with uh, CBC and NTV. Uh, NTV is the actual thing that SCTV is based on. NTV, I'll have you know, as you mentioned earlier, has the greatest production values in the years. I, I, which I forgot are not, about it until, <laughs> until the, I remember the little intro things now, which are great, but that fucking microphone in the shot is so great. Oh, God. It's just they everyone haven't... else, you got your logoed microphone, as you do, Yeah. and then NTV, Newfoundland Television, one presumes, yeah. has just this 
giant godforsaken bright blue Big thing with like Earth looks like the on Federation it. logo on yeah. it or something. I don't even oh, know. Yeah, yeah. It so, is intense. Well, you no, know, is the exact same logo they have had my entire life at least because uh, half of my family's from Newfoundland and <laughs> I have. Oh my god, I, oh, I, I've, I've gone wait. to Newfoundland so many times in my life and and throughout through the eighties, the nineties, the aughts. NTV has the same fucking logo. It is the uh, uh, UN blue background with the Earth spinning on it wow. and five stars Damn. in gold. It's so bad. It's great. So wonderfully bad. Okay, so this is why I've been cackling so hard over here is because <laughs> Eddie Joyce, the writer, obviously is quite a friendly Eddie Joyce, because, or so I thought, because he just gave the most gentle tweet possible about this whole situation. <laughs> uh, not This was April 26th, just, but... Uh, he wrote, A glimpse into the life of Eddie Joyce, a Canadian politician who is not me. Not me. Which, that's a very gentle reminder Wonderful. to people. Like, that is not you. Fuck off. However, <laughs> here is what he linked to. Another Twitter comment from, obviously, a Newfoundlander <laughs> in response to an Eddie Joyce interview. <laughs> wrote it to Eddie Joyce, CBC News, Newfoundland News NL, which has a Twitter account, which we should all follow, despite my unadherence to Twitter. Oh, jeez. Lord I'm Turner, sure yes. What on earth was that? What on earth was with that interview? Eddie, are you even competent enough to sit as an independent? You made absolutely no sense at all. You poor soul. Please resign altogether and hashtag make NL great again. And yes, it should be pointed out that uh, calling someone you poor soul in Newfoundland is like, like a southern it's woman like, calling, saying, bless your heart. Bless your heart. That's she what I was hates thinking. you. Yeah. She thinks you're an idiot. You're dumb and Die. possibly a whore. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. So. But having just seen the interview with Eddie Joyce that we saw, oh my god, which is a different one for the record than what this guy's but, referring but to. But this this could I actually had to check the time. I would stamp. like to say I would I would like to I would like just put out there, Eddie, are you even competent enough to sit as an independent? You made absolutely no sense at all. <laughs> Bless your heart, Eddie. Ask simply, are you a bully? He gets three words into saying, I don't think so. So he goes, I don't think. Stops himself, which would have been a great and great honest place to stop. Simple answer. Go, no, I don't think. Oh, I don't think. Yeah, that, that would have been <laughs> as fantastic as well. But then he goes on a five-minute rant that is just essentially, "How can I be a bully if I give people money?" Yeah, yeah. It's it's all it is, and it's about helping other people, and like you know, it's but it's the way we talked about it was it's not uh sarah huckabee nonsense where she obviously knows she's lying and just lies and lies and lies and lies no like eddie joyce clearly believes every word that he's saying is a valid answer and not a complete non sequitur and also a valid answer that that defends him wholeheartedly yeah like, uh, he he came off he um, gives money to to towns that are represented by mhas from other parties and yeah. therefore how could he be a bully well i can think of and the reporter doing the question could think of a ton of different ways and he just he looked baffled oh, I don't know. and pissed uh, uh, and whenever i encounter that reaction especially oh from especially from men of especially. a certain age especially it's just like you're gonna try to railroad this conversation rather than listen to a word yeah edgewise. well there, there was especially you, because oh, you don't get it and you don't want to there was especially a moment near the end where um uh the reporter clearly had had caught him saying something and was about to jump in with something and he did the classic let me finish let me finish let me finish oh, and yeah. says something completely different yep. that then has to be addressed it's, I would it's just a like classic to ask tactic. you on a personal note mm. do you have extended family that are for all intents and purposes Eddie Joyce ah uh, no don't oh thank, boy thank god oh i've had this conversation and it infuriates me because people like Eddie Joyce really think that they're defending themselves and launching a valid argument it, it, it's it's fascinating when there's obviously a complete unwillingness to even grasp the concept of the question it yeah. doesn't make sense to anyone else in the room but they're just so indignant and, and let, let me let me um connect them to something far worse but all but like probably legally not a good idea but i'm, I'm going to just use it as an excuse to <laughs> to give a definition of what i felt like he's he's doing here this mentally. part of the show is brought to you by mickey gorman i bet so ted bundy <laughs> <laughs> so Ted Bundy, uh, I believe it was Ted Bundy, uh, he briefly worked uh, while he was on his murder sprees at a suicide helpline. I think I've read this. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he he used that as an excuse to make up for his multiple murders. It, I, I'm allowed to do this. It's also how some people get away from some serial killers. I'm allowed to kill other people because I did this good deed, therefore... I have credit. Okay, so okay, so in a, in a much in a, <laughs> moral credit. Yeah. yeah, 
So in a, in a much less potentially litigious sort of way. Yeah, no, it's, you're, they're balancing the scales, and I can see that. Yeah. In, his, in his point of view, you know, he does give money to towns represented by other MHAs, and he does help people from other parties, and he does work with other party members, and he is generally helpful, apparently, according to himself. So that kind of makes it okay to be a total cunt sometimes and to, like, probably tear people's hides off and rip them to shreds. And yeah. this is the thing is, we don't know what this bullying is. This is the most detail-free story I've seen in a long time. And that's Newfoundland, because uh, Newfoundland runs by the old rules. The uh, The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, for instance, runs by the old Met rules, which are essentially, nothing to see here, yeah, move along, move along. <laughs> Occasionally with relatively close to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Newfoundland politics run the same gamut in which uh, if you want an answer, uh, slip some Mm. green. Slip some green. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because everything is so... Like, it's, it's better than it used to be, but everything is so concrete. You vote for us, the same party as your family did, and though... Because... Because... Those are the people you run with. That is your entire social group. That is your class. That is not unfamiliar in our particular province either. Yeah. Well, a lot of but oh my here. god, it can get insane. Apparently so, because yeah. it sounds like things are rampantly unhealthy. I mean, this is okay. So uh, there are now two uh, cabinet ministers, I believe, two liberal cabinet ministers in Newfoundland that have been removed and are sitting as independents now. Eddie Joyce mm-hmm. and uh, somebody Kirby. Um, but, and another, another, uh, cabinet minister from the same party, from the governing liberals, uh, resigned, uh, Kathy Joyce. Yeah. I think that was it. Wait, was she a Joyce too? Is everybody a Joyce? Jeez. Don't, don't, don't go too far down that. No, Kathy Bennett. Sorry. No, Kathy Bennett. Bennett. Yeah. I was going to say, don't, just don't go too far down that rabbit hole. And here I am getting, and here I am getting indignant that people would possibly confuse Eddie Joyce with Eddie Joyce. (laughs) So Kathy, I believe it was Bennett. She, uh, yeah, she resigned and there's... You know, speculation as to different reasons why she was resigning. I believe she pulled the the always and forever believable uh, spending more time, hmm. family, yeah. personal biz. Yeah, you know, Be- because everyone me time walks away from money and power to hang out with the people that they have to be with any other time. It's like. You know, that's, that, that's why Bill Clinton spent all his time there. It's like five-eighths of the Republican Party yeah. right now. They, they just want to take a little me time and focus on themselves and their family. So she resigned, and it turns out now that it's because she felt bullied and intimidated and all kinds of things. But, like, and I think in a way this is, like we've talked about, it's it's indicative of a change in culture generally where, you know, the old boys club and more importantly, you know, whatever gender, the old way of doing politics, but let's be real, the old boys club way of doing yeah. politics, you know, was, <laughs> was probably bullying. That's probably the way that shit got done. Yeah. You know, heads yeah. would roll to get your way sometimes. Now, you know, this all gets out, of course. Yeah. Even in Newfoundland, apparently this gets out <laughs> eventually. And so, uh, of th- course, thanks, thanks it's changing, to... but the, the people who c- haven't been able to recognize it as a problem or even unusual, yeah. oh, it's great. It's it's hilarious to see the utter bewilderment. And and uh, to add just, just one l- more layer of, of silliness to it, uh, a lot of it seems to be coming out through a Twitter account called Whacked. Or... Oh, Whack Job. That Whack was great. Job. A reporter actually asked a question. Do you think Whack Job is a do you think Whack Job is a member of the House of Assembly? Yeah, yeah. So I imagine most of Newfoundland sitting back going, yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, they're all Whack Job. Dude. Yeah, exactly. They're all whack well, job. that's the best part or the worst part depending on whether you're it's a Newfoundland or not out of all of this whack is it, you look at comments online about from different Newfoundlanders <laughs> talking about this. And uh they're all infuriated at every politician, yeah. of every stripe. It's oh yeah, great. Be- because it's just this wonderful clusterfuck of you're you're all horrible. Yeah. You've all gone along with this. Yeah, it's the same as if when well, it, not well, just you've all gone along here. with this, but really, this is your personal behavior. Yes, is what has to be dealt with now. There's not enough other problems facing yeah. Newfoundland. We can we their, can their take the time to deal with your personal behavior. Horribly. Yeah, no. And and hasn't been for decades, more or less, consistently. Oh my God, uh, Dale Kirby was the other guy, so he is uh, he's also been turfed. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious to hear when the details come out about this. Apparently, um, as I believe one of the I think it was the CBC reporter mentioned that uh, you know these aren't 
you know, refreshingly, these aren't sexual harassment allegations. So far. So far. So far. There's also a male member of the house that's come out and lodged a complaint about this as well. Yeah, but he seems to be more uh, uh, annoyed that, like, I, I could see that uh, the headbutting behavior of old, because uh, he, he was uh, significantly younger. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, significantly younger than the uh, uh, accused uh, Eddie Joyce. Most interesting part of this for me is that uh, people have been, apparently, people in the Liberal Party and possibly the Liberal, like the Liberal Caucus in Newfoundland and possibly the Liberal Cabinet, uh, have been complaining to the leaders of the opposition about this. Like, that's how little action was getting taken, that yeah. you had to break rank. And, and you didn't have to break, break rank happens. just with journalists. Yeah. You had to break rank with, like, the enemy. Yeah. That's you, intense. You never give your political enemy anything they can use against your party. Members that's of insane. the Liberal Caucus apparently are saying they have no faith in the complaints procedure and the ensuing investigations in this. They're saying this publicly. Uh, I can believe it. Like, man, how broke down are your internal workings if you're willing to, like, burn your... If you're willing to scorch your own earth, your own party's earth. Publicly. One of the last stories I worked on at the magazine involved me trying to get a single page of information out of a court file that was in Newfoundland. <laughs> it took me three months <laughs> uh-huh. and I want to say $75 to get an answer wow. of, we can't find it. Wow. Yeah. That's a great cop-out answer. Yep. It's like, what are you going to do with that? Well, no, well Nothing. Um, and, Not a goddamn thing. And, uh, of course, our editor was quite annoyed that I didn't do enough, even though I had literally gone to Newfoundland to try to get the fucking thing. He apparently should have talked to you with the leaders of the opposition parties in Newfoundland. I hear they hear everything. <laughs> leaking like a bay water sewer pipe. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Leaking like a bay... Bay, bay, Roberts, bay, Roberts, bay Roberts sewer, sewer pipe. pipe. Yeah. Wonderful. You were a Bay Roberts sewer pipe once? Ugh. Good times. Gross. Is there anything else going on locally? I feel like well, we're still speaking, waiting well, for speaking details of sewage, on these kind of things. Speaking of sewage, uh, Halifax Water once again released a, a ton of uh, uh, human feces into the Halifax Harbor and tried to cover up because they always do. So we're going to have to get back uh, uh, Peter Kelly and throw him in because that <laughs> seems to clear things he up. He absorbs all, yeah. all of it, apparently. That's why he's such a scum. I was just thinking, you know, if, if Huck Sanders has taught us anything, you're not supposed to go after looks. But, man, he just never looked the same after swimming in the harbor. He, no, nope. no, he did nope. not. Nope. His it's behavior was always man. terrible, but, ooh, that, like, the poor guy. Poor guy. Poor guy. Well, if we're going to talk about looks, I feel like we should move on to America. We definitely should move on to America. Because I just can't stop looking at America these days. My God. So, uh, a couple hours ago... Uh, mm-hmm. Read a whole bunch about uh, what's his name there, Michael Cohen. Yes, and his phone's being tapped. Sure for is. Weeks before he got his office and his home and his hotel room trounced. To to which Rudy Giuliani said, "Well, everything. You know, uh, well, yes, everything." But uh, Rudy defended uh, 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 Cohen, saying, "Like, well, he should have been made aware that his phone was tapped." Because that's what you do when you're investigating a criminal. Is that entitled bewildered, or is that I should have retired 15 years ago when I still had my full set? You know what I think was the greatest casting ever? Mm. James Woods as Rudy Giuliani. And it just gets better and better with age because they're both batshit insane fuckheads. And I want him to reprise the role. And he'll do it now totally He'll, he'll totally do it because he'll toe that fucking line and think that's great. And it's just like, no, 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 we want you to play him because you really capture how much of a useless asshole he is. Man, he seized a moment once upon a time. Yep. Had an outlandish amount of respect across his home country and beyond. And now he's sunken willingly to this. Yeah. Well, the truth this is amazing. He's making geriatric grandpa statements. Yeah. On Fox News, like <laughs> twice in two days, and twice in the span of twenty four hours. Yeah. Completely flipping uh, uh, the the tactic of not 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 a tactic. Completely flipping the narrative that Trump is trying to get out there concerning the payoff for Stormy Daniels and incriminating the entire fucking thing. Like every everyone on his side is now incriminated by that statement 
And you know what the funny thing is? He's not even the acting lawyer in the case. He's just acting as Trump's personal lawyer. <laughs> I read not today. even the president. I read Trump today someone as criticizing him as a lawyer saying the last time he was in a courtroom was for one of his divorces. <laughs> which, <laughs> which was last In week. other news, <laughs> yes, exactly. His, uh, his third wife, who uh, he divorced his second wife on the grounds that he was banging his soon-to-be third wife. Mm-hmm. Um Thomas hate when media talks about salacious details. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, no. So they're 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 going their separate ways, and the timing is a little convenient if your whole party and your whole cadre is going to go down. Yeah, yeah. But, get out, get out while you can. Yeah, like who was was it? Which was the kid? Was it uh, Don Junior's wife? Yeah, yeah, thing? yeah. She's uh, she's t- taken off. That's fantastic. That's good news for her. Uh, Rudy Giuliani also said, in terms of like uh, this was people Judy, that made Judy Giuliani. Judy Giuliani. That's great. Uh, Rudy Giuliani. Yani, yani. Um, he said as well that uh, uh, while Ivanka uh, should be kept around because she's good looking and some you know like no. Can you say she's good piece? Yeah, a piece. Something like that. A piece. Something to oogle and ogle. Um, Jared Kushner can be uh, tossed into the fucking uh, uh, garbage. Uh, that's a paraphrasing, but just barely. So he was actually setting up a play in which Jared Kushner is going to be thrown under the bus by the Trump campaign for this entire thing. Or this Trump is the thing. It's like Trump defense. Rudy Giuliani, if he's not narcos, like, if if it Rico's. hasn't started to fall apart upstairs, yeah, which like, it has. He's been smart enough to call enough attention to himself over the years. Yeah, like, but never never capitalize it on it successfully. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right, but like. And today he uh, he's, he's. I just can't fathom that he still has access, unless there's some plan where the shit he's coming out and saying is actually just softening the landing for more insane shit coming down the pipe. Yeah, like uh, it, it's hard. is this yes. purposeful? This the, craziness. The answer is Mike Lavinetti, all. Stormy Daniels' lawyer, yeah. wanted to send Fox and Friends a cake yeah. if they would keep having. Giuliani and Trump on to keep incriminating themselves and making his job easier. And absolutely like, should. They, they're making everyone's job easier because they're all a collection of How is this allowed to happen, though? I realize... What is it, John... Power is... What is, is John Oliver just, saying for it? Stupid Watergate? I yeah, realize yeah, it's stupid, that, like, it's stupid gate. Yeah, but, like, power... Power... All right. Uh, how to put this... Uh, uh, power is so alluring... That even if an idiot has it, everything has to revolve around it. I get that, but we talked about this in the sense of uh, Huckabee Sanders, who I just, uh, I don't, we'll digress about her smoky <laughs> eyes later on. Yes. Um, but we talked about this and how she goes up to the podium and she just makes the worst ass hat of herself every time. She just, like, she's not even she doesn't convince liar. anyone. She's not there to convince anyone. Yeah. She's just there to stymie and just... And she will be disrespected. Oh, kitty, you're gonna make all that sound so fucked up sitting in front of. Oh, we're apparently now sponsored by my house pets, who won't get it. <laughs> um, but it, she has an object lesson just in her immediate predecessor. Yeah, Sean Spicer went up and pulled this nonsense. Everyone made fun of him constantly. He came out after it was all done. And what wasn't he at an awards show? He was on stage. Yeah, he was at the Golden Globes during which um, Captain Lorca. Uh, uh, brought everyone's attention to it by uh, tweeting a, f- a face of just going, fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah. Well, didn't he try to like kind of make fun of himself? He's kind of like, yeah, I'm in on the joke. And it's like, yeah. and the entire Isn't world I hope collectively great? went, fuck you forever. Yeah, you have no credibility, and now you're not the one actively yeah. standing up for this shit. Except so for you the... have no purpose. Get out forever. The award show thought it was fucking hilarious, though, of course. Who's ever been on the same page mentally with any award show producer ever? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, oh, Tony Awards and Hugh Jackman. Tony Awards, period. Yeah, Tony Awards. That doesn't count. That Tony gets Awards. an exemption. <laughs> Can't uh, tell gays and trannies host this podcast. God damn. I, I, you, you want to talk about that? Oh, Mamma Mia is coming to town, and I just want to puke because, like, as much as it's like, I like ABBA, I know that. There's some people who really love that show. The movie was great. Meryl Streep's fantastic. But I hate how this town uh, looks at culture and goes, what's the softest shit we can do? Mm. Let's not do anything interesting. Mm -hmm. Bring fucking anything here. That's a sad transgression. 
But it's a sad digression for a reason. I went to America, mm. and I went to Detroit. Yeah. Which is where I figure you should start in America. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, you know, like, it, it, it's probably one of the more authentic places to go, and it kind of doesn't only go up from there, but it goes up in a lot of directions from there. Yeah. 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 And I loved it. People were just saying shit and doing shit and trying to build things and just, yeah, just, just despite it all, I thought, you know what? It. We don't have the balls for that. Uh-uh. No. Oh, it was no. a little jelly despite all of the all of the obvious badness going on around. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. It has also led to complete collapses and bad things like 400 years of slavery. Well, the Civil War wasn't, you know, that hot either. Yeah. Speaking of which... At least the Civil War was somebody's choice. G- genius, um, uh, uh, was it a, a genius voice of a generation? Oh my god. Amazing. Just, Kanye. if that's to draw, you know what, oh no, god. no, if that's to draw attention to his whatever, Is that, yeah. let's not. No. Let's not. Let's not even give him name recognition. Let me just say one thing. Okay. Um, there's, there's a, uh, a reporter at TMZ. I can't remember his name right now, but there's a video online of him addressing this to said celebrity's face and it is fucking amazing he just lays everything out to his face does he look like he heard it or learned anything he was in the room when it was said and he was this is a black reporter and he said listen i hear you i respect you i love your work you just said a bunch of fucked up shit. And was there any response that led you to believe that the audience of this remark learned anything or was made? He looked embarrassed. Well, that's something. <laughs> yeah. Well, he that looked something. He looked like he was being talked down to because he knew he had fucked up. And none of what eventually became him doubling down on it appeared. But you, you know what this has led to, though? There is a InfoWars poster now that you can buy uh with uh, uh his image on it it's like you know one, one of his pr- promotional things uh and uh the quote and it's for sale on infowars i don't ever want to support infowars in any way i don't even like dirtying my mouth with the name but i really want that poster <laughs> wow oh my god obviously for very different reasons oh god, yes. than your average yeah. listener of that show or watch for that show would want that poster yeah but wow yeah they've seen a they've seen a massive drop not only in twitter followers in the uh, like a million range if i recall <laughs> uh but also uh, uh and those are just the russian bots no oh. but purchasing of uh, uh their their records from you know like black audiences who are the majority of their audience mm-hmm. But there's been a massive. Are upswing. we using the in the gender neutral they, sense so we don't have to talk about Kanye West? Yes. Yeah, I'm over Fuck it. Fuck it, Kanye. Uh, but Kanye has now seen a massive upswing from the KKK, <laughs> alt right, <laughs> neo Nazis, everyone who <laughs> otherwise would hate him. Oh. Yeah. Poor Donda. Yeah. Poor Donda. Oh, oh, she doesn't oh, have to oh, see this. oh, and. To further try to make his new album, which apparently I heard is going to be a piece of shit, it's not at all like um, his last one. Oh no! See, this is getting this is going too far. We're we're no, 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 no! Just wait for it. Just wait. He's putting the photo of the doctor he believes killed Donda as the cover of the album. The doctor has written a, a official complaint saying, "Do this, and I will sue you." I wish my facial expression could be confirmed. <laughs> Via audio, because Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, that is, that's hard lawsuit. That is, you are going to get shit kicked Whoa. in court, even if you are a millionaire. Calling it right now, the next big, oops, better get out with my, you know, ass intact. And it is quite a substantial ass to get out. Yeah, yeah. divorce territory there. Get out while you can. Fuck. Pretty bad when you have to flee a marriage out of embarrassment and you're the Kardashian. Yeah. Oh, speaking of uh, uh, potential marriage issues and whatnot, um, uh, Beyonce is not too happy that Jay-Z is under federal investigation concerning a $200 million deal. Ooh. That just came out, so I don't know any details of it, Ooh. but holy shit. Who isn't under investigation these days in America? Um, Most people who should oh, be. Oh, technically, right. Bill Cosby, because he was That's found not, guilty. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Man, grossest things in that deposition. Mm. Oh, my God. Just, uh, well, we want to talk about, you know, an old man who doesn't get it. 
Like, holy shit. He, he admitted to horrifying things. And, and then, just yesterday, released an Just s- gave her three Benadryl, and then she Arr. passed out, and then she wasn't complaining. It's like, what? And then, and honestly, and this is just slight paraphrasing, and then, you know, That's she, barely yeah, she didn't resist. She couldn't. She was passed out. Nothing gonna stop me. Yeah. Nothing was gonna stop me. Like, something yeah, about a pet. Yeah, holy shit. Nothing's gonna stop me. And, and, uh, and uh. so, today or yesterday, he released an official statement uh, claiming that uh, it was it was a mis uh, a misjustice. The entire thing was a misjustice because when the legal system was founded, uh, black people weren't considered people. So it's okay for him to prison. rape people. I hope he dies in prison. Yeah, yeah, because uh, women weren't considered people either. So the I, that earliest TV work. show I ever remember, like. Tuning in for every week and laughing my head off. It was yeah, definitely the Cosby Show. Yeah, and uh, someone at Vice, I want to say, sat down and watched it again and was just like, "Now it just feels like this, this deeply offensive, fuck you," where it's like everything he says is a lie, everything. I feel like at least Bob Saget. I feel doesn't like... pretend when he's off uh, 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 off uh, screen from Full House. He he goes about saying fuck this, fuck you, whatever. Well, you know, in his defense, at least oh, yeah, Bob he hasn't Saget raped doesn't anyone. rape people. No, 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 <laughs> no. Bob Saget will do many things, but he will not rape you. <laughs> glowing, He'll do many gross things with your consent. Glowing endorsement for Bob Saget. <laughs> and he will for not consent. Rape you. <laughs> and for gross things, so yeah. long as you have Speaking consent of consent, yes, also Uncle Joey will do things with consent if you are a 16-year-old Alanis set. Wow. Cough. Oh, that's who I you ought to heard know. About is that in a long time. Yeah. But, oh. Ooh. Yeah. He's like Warren Beatty, but you know, shittier. <laughs> I had such a good segue to bring up Michelle Wolf earlier, and I can't now. I'm just all over the map. This is great, man. Cosby, just <sighs> such a uh, nope, such a throw. Gross. We're just gonna we're just gonna go on. We're gonna go on from like. Oh, such a such a grotesque man! Just such a wonderful woman. God. I'm so yeah. so. I okay. I loved Michelle Wolf for the last little while. Not to be too local hipster about it, but like. But you know, she's no, good. Uh, no. Brent and I discovered her a while back now. Um, I can't remember why. I think she was, she's been a guest on talk shows, you know, for a little bit now. And oh, she had her HBO special. I think we saw that. Yeah, she's someone that you you're more likely to recognize just looking at her than her name, at this moment. Well, before. well, at this moment, oh before. my god, because her face is everywhere. But uh, before, I don't know. I think with the first few times we saw her, I had definitely not encountered her before. And then oh, okay. I fell immediately in love with this very caustic, wonderful woman. <laughs> but this is the thing. is She wasn't even actually caustic. No, it was but just she truth. is a caustic comedian. Yeah. She is like, well, in the same way that yeah. she speaks on varnished truth, and it's hilarious. But and she doesn't She doesn't set out to tear anyone. Well, no, nah, maybe she does. Maybe she does no, no. I think she should. No, no. Well, yeah, yes, but no. She does. She does that wonderful thing that um, uh, actually, uh, like John Stewart, really did well. Where they know everything about you, they say really good things about you, and then they cut right to that one thing. Yeah. That will burn you from the inside out. Oh my God. So everyone knows now that she went to the White House press correspondence dinner, which you know. Uh, who, who, so you did something way, that Trump couldn't do. Yeah, their response was yeah, apologize. Uh, Those pricks. They have. It's there to celebrate the First Amendment, and they apologized for an for celebrating the First, the First Amendment. They are. That's what I'm cowards. jealous of America of. Yeah, they have better free speech than we do. Yeah, they do. They and do. this is and this is okay. This is a couch occupied solely by people who are supposed to be defended by hate speech laws. Like, and I'm I'm totally having fun following Warren Kinsella's uh, uh, battles with uh, your ward news. Oh, there's a neo-Nazi rag in Ontario mm-hmm. called your ward news, and uh, uh, Warren Kinsella and his wife has have been uh, doing a private prosecution of it um, because fuck that, it's hate speech. But like this is outright advocating I don't for agree genocide. With hate speech. There's where you draw the line. Yeah. You can't incite violence. You can't advocate and genocide. Boy, you does can't it yell fire in a crowded theater and all that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But if you're gonna pretend to celebrate the First Amendment and then apologize for the remarks of a comedian, yeah, which were not only funny, but and not only true, yeah, but I would, I would say necessary. Yeah. And 
it equal to the this was actually like an extreme year. This was equal to yeah. every single other year. It was just as caustic. Uh, Cecily Strong, yeah, uh, made a joke about right in front of Obama. That was a joke about white cops, I believe, shooting black people. Yeah. And not a word was said that I recall. Certainly not on this magnitude. No. Like, okay, so... Like, George Bush sat there and was ridiculed for eight straight years. And because it was Bush, he just says, hey, 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 that's kind of funny. You know what? I never thought I would have any feelings besides, like, disgust and hate for George Bush. And then things got so much darker on this timeline. Yeah. And, and also... Just, man, you, someone can be so simple sometimes you just can't argue. I, I also, I, I gained a lot of, not respect, but like for him when I found out that he fucking hates Dick Cheney. Yeah, I can can't be that. in the same room with him. They hate each other. They call each other the worst fucking names. That makes me feel better. He's still a war criminal, though. Oh, yeah, he's still a war criminal. Yeah, but Dick Cheney's a bigger war, war criminal. criminal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Trump can't bring himself to, God, I'm surprised he can exist, there's so much disgust, but he, he can't bear to handle mockery. He's fine with the general disdain, but he yeah. can't seem to handle mockery. If it was an ass-kissing fest, he would have been there. Yeah. With so, a throne. Oh yeah. So Michelle Wolf got up there and mocked the house down, just burned everyone to a cinder. It was wonderful. Every as other comedians have done in the past. Yeah. And then mocked the fuck out of Trump and it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna fast forward a little bit because I'm so angry at Mika Brzezinski, I can't hold it in. Ah. So she burned everyone down. She burned the news people down. Mm-hmm. And then she burned Trump down. And then she burned Sarah Sanders down for being a liar. Yeah. And for propping up a horrifying authoritarian regime that hates and punishes women. Yeah. Uh, among others. And yet, somehow, Maggie Haberman and others, including Mika Brzezinski, found her comments to be about Sarah Sanders' appearance, somehow. Mm-hmm. But, like, everyone got all fake outrage about that, which was one thing. I expected it from the people on the right, because, you know, if your party's in power and gets mocked to hell and gone, of course, that's what you're supposed to do, apparently, when you have no sense of humor. Yeah. But fucking the the super rich yeah. journalists yeah. and super rich media types yeah. in America that were furious over this. Mika Brzezinski, not from, uh, you know, Coffee Time, Idiocy Hour, whatever. Mm-hmm. I actually watch that show because it's far superior to any morning television in Canada. Any morning television in Canada. Any morning it's television. It's all that bad. Well, mm, TV Ontario, I don't know. We don't live there. It's probably better. YTV used to have breakfast, uh, a really fun thing in the br- uh, the morning. They'd show cartoons and then have like a little breakfast uh, uh, thing. With that would be far superior to yeah. having to do Oh, them. shit. No, it was Sean Majunder. Who wants to endure Ben Mulrooney in the morning? Ew. Ew. So anyway, I get sucked into watching Mika and Joe and... Uh, oh, what's his name? The handsome one. Willie guys. Oh, Willie guys. Um... <laughs> Now, now I'm going to get in trouble for talking about appearances. I know. But so she was mad about the, the appearance jokes at Sarah Huckabee Sanders, oh, Sarah, well, who I'll is one of the you. worst, worst people I can imagine. So oh, yeah. deserved, even if it was about that, but it wasn't. But she was mad at a group of journalists responding to Michelle Wolf's jokes about how broke Trump is by all parroting, how broke is he? Yeah. She was basically saying that that made journalists, made it obvious that they were all complicit against the Trump government, and now Trump supporters would understand that they would take it that the media is biased against Trump. As if Trump's government isn't a mockery of everything journalism is supposed to defend. Yeah, and as if a basic call-out joke isn't the most basic fucking thing you can do And it would be stage. bad enough if she was just agreeing with Maggie Haberman because she goes on, you know, Mika and Morning Joe, so they all have to be and defend each other. And it would have been bad enough if she was just a rich media type. And it would have been bad enough if she was just the kind of feminist that thinks defending Sarah Huckabee Sanders against an eyeshadow joke is more important than standing up against every element of Trump's government yeah. at all. Oh, yeah. But one of the jokes Michelle Wolf told was about Joe and Mika and their engagement after having met in the workplace. And she referred to it as when a Me Too moment turns out, I believe it was. What? It, she fuck? no 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 Michelle Wolf did she was like it's kind of like when a Me Too moment goes right, I believe was the joke and 
that I guarantee you was at the root of Mika Brzezinski being yeah a world class hypocrite yeah who defends women and equality and you have to treat women oh as gosh. equal and yet has no goddamn problem with Sean Spicer being torn to shreds. Yeah. On SNL, they play it and laugh at those clips on their show. Yeah, they every kind of joke they play, and I guarantee you, a lot of the jokes that they've played from late night have played on looks. For Christ's sakes, every time it's they true. imitate, uh, who's that weird Southern racist who's the head of the Justice Department? Sessions. Oh yeah, Jeff Sessions. He's a Keebler elf. Yes, every time. Yeah. Um, Oh, what's her name? Kate McKinnon. Every time Kate McKinnon comes out dressed as that hilarious, clear mockery of his appearance, they yeah. laugh their heads off. Yeah. But this she couldn't have, yeah. and I wonder why. Mm. What an embarrassment. I, now I have no morning TV to watch. It's either that or Ben Mulroney, so I just say no. I, I haven't watched any morning TV with the exception of the Space Channel since, like, 1999. I don't know why. It's just I hate all morning TV, and you turn there, and it's like... 90s sci-fi refund or reruns. I'm going to sit great. at the table and talk to my husband over breakfast. Thanks, Mika Brzezinski. I'm going to watch Stargate. Fuck that. <laughs> I wish I was watching Stargate. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, on, a, on a pop culture note, uh, you remember Tilk? Huh? Uh, uh, the big black guy in Stargate? No. What? He was he was one of the, the primary four characters. I love the, the octave Teal. range that I get from not remembering Stargate. It's Teal'c! Are we talking about the show or the movie? The the show. I've never seen the show. Oh, for, it's Richard Dean Anderson. I'm waiting for reasons to watch the show. It's hilarious. In a great way. It it's in it's self referentially cheesy. It it likes to run with the concept from the movie, but then just go like balls out insane. Um it's fantastic. It's it's nineties high cheese. Who the hell was that James Spader in that movie? Yes, and they have a guy wow. who who plays James Spader in the show. Like doing his best to be James Spader, but like evolve the Spader concept and character until by the end of the show, this isn't a spoiler, it's just as ridiculous. Um, he has he has evolved beyond humanity into uh, energy twice. And come back because he found it boring. And still acting like James Spader. I don't know that I'll watch that. You have to watch it. It's great. But I will watch Michelle Wolf's new show coming on Netflix at the end of this month. What's that? Uh, I don't know, but it's her show. I can't remember the name of it. But damn it. What a great timing. What great timing, though. Just watch Michelle Wolf. Burn the government down. Metaphorically. Metaphorically. And, and then have Netflix. your own Netflix show. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. That's the American dream. Oh, speaking of Netflix, and I know we're starting to get into like the territory of the other thing, but speaking of which, people really should listen to our other podcast. You should really listen to uh, "Won't You Please Shut Up," where we will talk about the robot ass in Lost in Space. Okay, let's let's <laughs> let's go to the kitchen and catch up. Okay, because we need to watch that and uh, catch. All there's else nothing later. else to talk about America. It's all Michelle Wolf, which oh, is hey, great. Yeah. Stormy Daniels, which is bringing porn into a whole new name, and Kanye West, who is just creating problems for fifth grade teachers everyone. who can't reference the news. Oh, and God. Kanye West is now Baltimore. Oh, oh, wait. There is one more thing. There is one more thing. Um, the Washington racial slurs have been caught in <laughs> a, <laughs> that took me a second. in a uh, international prostitution ring scandal in which they sold access to their own cheerleaders. And that's still not offensive enough as their own name. I know. Wow. Well, mm, the depends. whole thing is a. It, so what's it? Okay, it may have been to politicians. Um, so they 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 went on a trip. Um, I want to say it was it was somewhere in Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was kind of like a cultural uh, uh, outreach to rich people and other politicians and shit. That's the culture they need to reach out to. Yeah, and not only were nine of the girls chosen to be escorts. For nine high-powered men but they were uh, the men were also given access to watch the women change without knowledge of the women see that's gross yeah I realize I'm not you know giving anything new to the conversation by calling that gross but like <laughs> okay well let's get back to Canada for a hot second because our governing party at their party convention I believe it was really signed on to legalizing prostitution. Mm -hmm. The government won't do it. Don't worry. They're they're all a bunch of pussies. So that No, no. The way we way. do things in Canada is we'll just remove the laws and not actually create any protection. So it becomes this nebulous thing of like the cops will hassle you, 
but they can't charge you with anything, so it's technically legal at by then, manner of I didn't see it. At least then prostitutes might be more likely to call the cops when something goes yeah, terribly wrong. Yeah, exactly. So that, sadly enough, that would even be an improvement. It's, it's how things in Canada actually progress. We just stop caring about stuff, yeah. and then you can do it. But you know what? Like, you know, prostitution, I'm not going to go all moral panic on prostitution. But why are you going to spy on people? That's so gross. I know. I know. And, and, and then, then essentially sell them. And then go back home and call yourselves the Redskins. Yeah. Ugh, fuck Washington. <laughs> fuck Washington seems like the perfect end every. Fuck American Washington. Segment. Fuck Washington. Fuck you, I'm drained that swamp.